noted, the, the UNCITRAL focus on procedure is missing a very large part of the problem. And it sounds like even if you think about the MIC as a good option for addressing some procedural issues, there's still a lot of missing business, which is to say the substantive rights. And um, I'm, I guess, having just come in from Washington on the train and going right back again uh, afterwards, I thought I would share a little bit of what's happening in Washington because there's obviously been a transformational change on the U.S. position, our government's position in ISDS with an enormous amount of focus on the substance of the investor rights and rules. And it's perhaps the rare instance, Colin, where the U.S. is in a more progressive position than Europe. Shocker. Um, now I want to explain the U.S. approach. We have a long-standing uh, debate about this, so I'm teasing him a little bit. But there is an interesting question. How has this U.S. approach come about? And um, some piece of it's the philosophy of the current U.S. trade representative, um, but a larger part of it is just political viability. ISDS is what ultimately tanked the TPP in the U.S. Congress. There simply isn't political appetite for the notion of having a parallel system of justice for multinational companies that has substantive rights that extend beyond what are already pretty grand um, wide covering property rights in the U.S. law as interpreted by our court. Now, people know now the Democrats control the lower chamber, the House of Representatives, but this reform with, that shows up in the revised NAFTA agreement was in the context of total congressional control by the Republicans. So that wasn't a political shift that short term. That was a realization that from the 10 months after the TPP was signed, it simply couldn't get a majority in our Congress. Despite a huge corporate campaign of President Obama, his very persuasive self. And so that by the time Trump came and withdraw, withdrew from TPP, there was a moldering corpse of an agreement that had de was deceased for some months that he put in a box and buried and announced he killed. And that political reality is as much the reason why, for instance, the USMCA, as the administration calls it, but also the notice for negotiations with the UK, with Japan, doesn't have any investor state. That is um, recognizing the tolerance left in the US. And we have had our association of state legislators, so the legislative bodies of the 50 US subfederal entities, the states. We have had our states, attorneys general, our cities, our counties, all of the entities that need policy space, that want regulatory policy space, are ill convinced of the notion that, say, the reforms in TPP on the substantive rules left them any space. These are the practitioners. And they've all passed resolutions saying, no, we just we can't have that regime, as well as many of our most famous law professors from across the political spectrum. So to look at all of those documents, if this seems improbable, at tradewatch.org, www.tradewatch.org is our website. And we've actually put them in one unified document, so you can actually see who said what, which gets you to the US. Uh, mexico can agreement, otherwise known as NAFTA 2.0. So it has the procedural forms that are in the MIC, um, no rotating tribunalists, and limits on damages, etc. But then it deals with the real issues, which is the substantive rights. So first of all, there is no ISDS at all between developed countries anymore in U.S. policy. So for, with respect to Canada, it's gone. And if you're speaking about um, the issues around environment and climate, and again, you would say, with this administration, that's what that's about. But it's beyond the administration. It's what the political and polity of state legislators, Congress, etc., will tolerate. The majority of the NAFTA ISDS cases were US corporations, many of them extractives, versus Canada. It has better, Canada has more progressive environmental and climate policies. And by merit of getting rid of that, you just solved a whole extra parallel system of corporate rights to attack that policy space that Canada is using in a much more clever way than the US. I'll just put it that way to be diplomatic in the UN. Um, I have strong feelings about what the US is doing, and it is not pretty. With respect to Mexico, and this is what I would say is the only argument one would have for um, any extrajudicial system is, the system for Mexico that's retained is, with respect to direct expropriation, 
after you've exhausted domestic remedies. So you have to have gotten yourself expropriated. The definition is concrete. It's transfer of title or actual occupation. There's no indirect expropriation. And then you have to try the domestic system. And you basically only get access to another parallel place to get your cash back of an actual investment if actually after three years, well, two and a half years, you cannot actually get any movement in the domestic process. That is one of the fiercest critics of ISDS um, in the US, I find to be actually a fine place to have a fix for a real problem as compared to setting up a whole set of substantive extra rights that go far beyond what most countries, to, to fight with Colin on that point, have in their domestic laws. So again, the US has enormously broad property protections, and we haven't anything like MST or FET. We don't allow for compensation for indirect expropriation, except for the tiny, narrowest set of extraordinary circumstances. So just to, to close, um, Basically, what's happened in the US is there was no one was convinced that there was a need for it. And I just want to bring to people's attention the empirical study that we have looking at the countries that have withdrawn and showing that they're likely to get more FDI, not less. Their credit ratings are likely to go up, not down, if they leave the system. It's Indonesia, India, Bolivia, Ecuador, etc., South Africa. But that in addition, the liability of having these broad rights was so great that it made it just politically untenable for that system to go forward. And that is what has now happened in the United States.